Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. This rapid rise in thyroid cancer has really become a problem. Um, we're diagnosing more and more and more. I think largely because we are just using ultrasound and biopsy of finding very little small places that we would have never known about. Um, some of that is probably good because if you diagnose a small one that's eventually going to be big, that's a good thing. But we're starting to understand that a lot of these small ones stay small for years and years and years. And we really have to question whether we're helping or hurting by diagnosing all these little small thyroid cancers. So there's a big discussion going on in the United States about how small should we biopsy? Where do we draw the cutoff? The new American Thyroid Association guidelines that will be out this spring will say not to biopsy anything less than a centimeter. Less than a centimeter you should watch even if it's suspicious because it may well be you're hurting more people than you're helping by diagnosing that little small thyroid cancer. So the last 10 years have seen a really dramatic change in how we take care of thyroid cancer. In the past, most of the thyroid cancer we treated was big disease, it was found with our hands, and so a one-size-fits-all approach where we did total thyroidectomy and radioactive iodine for everybody was appropriate. Now, as we're diagnosing more and more of this low-risk cancer, it makes us take a step back and say, how are we treating this? And that leads us to this risk-adapted approach. In the past, our risk stratification was just whether you were going to die or not from thyroid cancer. But now the risk stratification has to do with what's your risk of recurrence? What's the likelihood that we'll cure you with an early surgery? And even what's the risk if I don't do anything and watch? So there's been multiple papers published over the last five or 10 years that have looked at lots of factors we get from the pathology report, the size of the tumor and the number of lymph nodes and is there extra thyroid extension and all those little details of the pathology report allow you to look at that and say your risk of recurrence is 2% or your risk of recurrence is 50%. And that should guide how we do that initial thing. In the new ATA guidelines, you're going to see in the old days, we sort of had three levels of risk, low, intermediate, and high. But in clinical practice, you realize not everybody fits into one of those three buckets. It really is a continuum. There are very low risk patients, and then there are some factors that make you a little higher, factors that make you a little higher. And we're now talking about this as a continuum of risk. So that when I meet with you before or after your thyroid surgery, we try to take all of those factors that we know from the pathology report, from the surgical report, and even many times from a serum thyroglobulin, our thyroid cancer marker blood test, done about six weeks after surgery to help me understand what's your risk of having persistent disease, what's your risk of having a recurrence, and based on that individualized estimate for you as a person, then we decide, do we need to do more adjuvant therapy? How intensive does your follow-up need to be? How much TSH suppression? So we'll find it much more individualized. We've gone a million miles away from one size fits all, where the pathway for a low-risk patient may be very few visits and very minimum follow-up, while the pathway for a high-risk patient is a lot of scanning and a lot of follow-up. It's made thyroid cancer much more complicated, no question about it. Anybody could do it when it was one size fits all. But now that you're having to do individualized care, what we're seeing is it's requiring more specialized care and really understanding what the surgery found in the operating room, a good pathology report, a good ultrasonographer, good lab test, all of those are really critical to taking care of a thyroid cancer patient this year. So clearly one of the things that we're always trying to figure out is what's the appropriate therapy for you? Most people assume that more is better, that if I just do more surgery and if I just do more radioactive iodine, the outcomes would be better, and that's clearly not the case. There are some patients that are achieved excellent outcomes with a very minimal surgery, maybe just taking out half the thyroid, and there are other that need a whole lot more. So we take that initial risk estimate from looking at the pathology report. Size is a part of it, and it turns out size sort of co-localizes with other important factors. You hardly ever see a great big tumor with no lymph node metastasis. Great big tumors have lymph node metastasis. They grow outside the thyroid. They're more likely to spread other places as opposed to little small tumors that generally don't. So size is kind of a rough estimate that gets us started, but then we fill in the rest of the details with all those other factors. 
I think the thing that's changed is rather than saying one size fits all and everybody gets a big treatment, we say, what's the minimum treatment I can give you and you'll still be at my retirement party in 30 years? Not what's the maximum I can do for you, what's the minimum I can do for you? Now you have to be careful with this because every time in oncology when we start to de-escalate therapy and de-intensify, there's the risk that we swing too far. So we want to back off slowly and we want to provide less than aggressive therapy in patients that it's okay to be wrong. In the low risk patients, if I only do a lobectomy, the risk of recurrence is two or three percent. But that recurrence is in the neck. I find it really easily with ultrasound. I find it really easily with follow-up. And in the two or three percent that I didn't do an aggressive therapy to, I have a wonderful salvage therapy that works great and they're still at my retirement party. So it's a combination of, yes, what's the initial risk? And then as we follow them over time, if I'm wrong, is it okay for me to be wrong and provide an additional therapy down the road?